Hello guys, welcome to Online Web Tutor presented by Profit Solution Stream. I am Sanjay. We are learning WordPress Global's beginner tutorial and this is our part 5. Inside this video session guys, we will learn some global parameters like WP DB, WP Local, WP Roles and WP Registered Sidebars. And also guys, if you are a beginner to this channel, please don't forget to subscribe and keep watching our previous video sessions to get the clear concept about WordPress Global's beginner tutorial. So basically guys, so far we have completed much more thing inside our this playlist. So far we have seen about browser detection global parameters, web server detection global parameters as well as version detection global parameters. So inside this video session guys, we are going to see these are the global parameters that why actually we use inside our WordPress code. So if we go to its documentation section. So here guys, I have written some sort of statements for these parameters like WPDB. This is a global parameter for database connection and query builder with WordPress. WP local, it gives the complete local details of WordPress setup. What basically WP roles is? WP roles basically the parameters which gives details about available user roles inside our WordPress setup. And finally, we have called WP Registered Sidebars. It gives all the details about registered sidebars. So let's starting understanding about these parameters one by one in our code. So to understand about these parameters guys, actually we have made a simple plugin for that and something called WP, so sorry, it's global plugin. This is the sample plugin that we have developed. So if you go to administrator panel, click here on the plugin section. Now inside this plugin list guys, as we can see that global plugin, this is a simple plugin which basically for introduction of global variables in WordPress. This is a sample plugin for demonstration. So if we go to editor, inside this plugin guys, what we did so far, we have simply given a introduction part of this plugin. Now by adding a simple line something called add action and this is add menu this is the action hook by using this we are attaching a simple menu while activation of this plugin and this is a callback function this is a callback function basically registered a menu page for this plugin and now inside this menu page we have a callback function something called wpn fn global menu by calling this callback function, this is a simple statement we got, something called welcome here. So if we go to administrator panel, reload this page once more. So first of all, if we deactivate this plugin, now nothing happens. If we click on activate, as we can see that global OWT, this is a menu actually added by this plugin. So once we click on this menu, this is a message called welcome here. Now we are going to understand about global parameters. So first of all, just go to editor. So I'm going to write something. The first parameter should be something global WPDB. This is the important parameter guys to make our WordPress calls with a database connection. Suppose we are going to insert some data. We are going to update some data as well as we are going to uh, delete some data. So in those cases, if you want to make our queries, WPDB is the important parameter which plays an important role. So if we want to suppose let's say print R and WPDB, it gives all the details about our global parameter called WPDB and let me make some formatting. So eco PRE tag, save this file and now back to administrator panel. So once we reload this page, as we can see that this is the definition of WPDB and this provides imp important information about our database tables. So if I make some zoom inside this page guys, as we can see that the last query that we have executed something like this, it also provides the information about last query. Suppose we are going to insert some record after inserting, it will give an ID and that ID actually inserted inside insert ID variable. And also how many rows actually we fetched from our select query. It will gives us about the count inside num rows. And finally, if we want to iterate over all the results says that actually we got from the database, it stores inside this variable. So it has all the parameters actually have the different different roles. So scroll down. These are the provided tables for the WPDB. It performs operations for posts, comments, links and many more tables actually the WordPress default provides. 
So now we have a question right here. So how can we use WPDB to make our query builder for WordPress? So all these questions guys we will discuss in our upcoming videos means in the next part. So all the things that we have to understand right now is that WPDB is used to make our queries with WordPress. So back to slide. Now the next parameter is something called WP locale. So if I copy this variable, go to editor and now if I just make comment of this line or let's say that this is another declaration of this variable. So if I copy this WP locale and print inside print R. So if I save this file, after saving that go to browser, reload this page and now all the details we have about the WP locale object. As we can see that it contains all the details about weekday, weekday initial, weekday abbreviation start of week, month and many more informations actually the WordPress is used. WP locale is nothing in WordPress. This is the calendar system actually the WordPress uses entire into the application. So basically guys after observing these data we have a question is that why we use locale or what is the use of locale object. So suppose we are going to use our some weekdays or some values inside our WP setup inside any plugin development code or let's say theme development code. So if we want to check the available values for this object we can just echo WP locale and we can watch all these values and according to that actually available values we can use into our code. So this is all about WP locale which basically gives us all the details of available values in our entire project of WordPress. So back to slides. Next parameters we have called WP roles which basically gives the available user roles and the capabilities actions. So back to editor and let's say that just declare uh, another variable called WP roles. So if, if I copy that, replace with that, save this file, go to browser and reload this page. And here is the list of all available roles entire into the application of this current WordPress setup. This is WP roles object. Inside this roles array, we have admin setter, scroll down. This is for editor, scroll down. This is for author and many more actually the WordPress roles provides. Okay. Inside each individual array something called administrator. This is simply administrator and now what capabilities he has, what actually powers he has to do inside in this currently open WordPress setup all defined here inside this capabilities array. Inside this capabilities arrays guys we have key keys called switch themes which indicates when it has it means that administrator can switch themes edit themes activate plugins and so more all the available options with numbered as one it indicates that these operations will be performed by administrator user role so if i scroll down inside editor as a user role inside this we have all these ones it means that it also performs the same operation as our administrator panel what operations actually basically editor can perform inside this capabilities array as we can see that moderate comments, manage categories, manage links and upload files. Inside this capabilities array we can observe that some of the options are not available as administrator has something called switch themes, edit themes, activate plugins and so more options. And this is because this is an administrator user role and this is an editor user role. All the user roles in a WordPress setup has their different different actions. So if I scroll down, this is for the author. Inside this author guys as we can see that inside capabilities array these are the actions actually performed by author. So all the details about the user roles we can get our global parameters something called WP roles. Suppose we have made a plugin. Inside that plugin we have suppose made some functionality according to our available user roles. So how can we see about the capabilities? So by using WP roles we can just check out the available capabilities for all individual user roles in WordPress. This is all about our WP user roles. So if I go to slides, our next global parameter is something called WP registered sidebars. So if I copy that, 
Simply, this clover parameters gives us the detail about the available registered sidebars. So if I copy that, go to editor and let me declare by separating with comma. Inside this print R, just I'm going to paste it here. After saving this file, go to administrator panel and reload this page. Now again, we have a list. So before understanding to the list, if we go to the appearance tab inside this widget section, Inside this widget section guys, as we can see that inside sidebar, we have called blog sidebar. Again, we have footer 1 sidebar, footer 2 sidebar, it means that we have 3 available registered sidebars. So if I go to our insert panel again, now inside this list, this is sidebar 1, which has a name called blog sidebar. So if I compare this slide to this tab. We can understand that this is the detail called blog sidebar contained by inside this array. Okay, so basically we have sidebar 1, sidebar 2 and sidebar 3 available registered sidebars. So by the use of this global parameter something called WB registered sidebars, we can just make simply a count to all available registered sidebars to our WordPress setup. For example, this is a available options for sidebar 3 and this has a name of footer 2. So if I go to our registered sidebars, this is our footer 2. So if I open that, this is a simple description of this footer 2, something called add widgets here to appear in a footer. So if I compare that, this is a description as we have seen. So simply guys, by using this WP registered sidebars, we can see all the complete details about the available registered sidebars in our WordPress setup. So I think guys that I have explained about each global parameters that we have discussed inside this video session. So if you have any doubt in this video session guys, then please drop your comment. I will give my reply as soon as possible. So for this video session guys, thank you for watching. Have a great day.